Welcome to STARS Podcast, your growth mindset mecca. We are all about self-leadership principles here at STARS Podcast. Our guests come from all over the world with very unique stories of how they hack their way into success. As you'll quickly find out, nothing happens overnight. And as always, enjoy the journey. This episode is brought to you by NF Daddy's NFT Project. We are five dads with a shared why, a passion to help others safely enjoy the NFT and crypto space just as we all have. This project symbolizes how hard work and collaboration can achieve a dream. The NF Daddies team is focused on the mental and physical well-being of our community while promoting NFT and crypto literacy through the NF Daddies Academy. Our mission is to help launch 100 NFT projects and onboard 1,000 of our friends. That's right, 100 projects, 1,000 friends, into the NFT space. Check us out, nfdaddies.io, and you can find us on all of our socials at nfdaddiesnft. Okay, can you hear me? Oh, yeah. I got you. All right, yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> this no problem like at all. A course and a half to try to get through. Oh, to get onto Zoom? Yeah, because like I used it for my daughter's school when she was in school, but the laptop, like my desktop doesn't have a webcam, and the webcam I have on my laptop it, it wouldn't turn on it wouldn't work and i thought the privacy settings were on or something but uh-huh. i don't know so i just clicked it and got in so you weren't sitting here waiting for me getting mad ah uh, don't even worry <laughs> about it i'm not mad it's friday i'm sitting here doing a podcast with you i am totally good oh yo did you hear that spotty wi-fi song with bun b Heck yeah, I did. Oh my god bro i was like yo that's that's amazing dude i went and spent like 600 just now <laughs> did you really his, yeah i bought one of his songs and now i'm talking to him trying to make him a hoodlum nice oh my god that'd be so cool yeah he's incredible dude i mean his music i'm from houston originally right so down there we listen to bun b a lot and we listen to chopped and screwed music a lot of different kinds of like hardcore rap music but like i haven't heard something like that in a while man that just took me back it was like nostalgia mm-hmm Yeah, I'm not familiar with chopped and screwed, like the the genre. I don't know what that means. Um, so you know what trap music is? Mm-hmm. You know what dubstep is? Sort of, yeah. It's basically the same thing. So in the South, like um, we take rap songs and they like you know how everything they say in the South is everything goes slow, like mm-hmm. you drive slow, everything's slow. So they slow the music down and then a DJ will chop and screw it, which means like it's almost like a DJ spinning a record in a sense. So they'll like slow down a song and then they'll play it real slow. Like if you want to just go to YouTube and type in um, Mike Jones chopped and screwed or or Trill uh, chopped and screwed or uh, even Bun B chopped and screwed. There's so many Bun B songs. And it's I don't know if you'd like it or not. It's like you kind of got to grow up around that music. But it to me, I love it. Yeah, I won't be able to play it on here, but yeah, no, no, no. I, I just I just here. wrote it. Yeah, I just wrote it down. <laughs> to uh to look up cool well i'm just going to do the quick intro and then we'll jump right in or if that's all right with you yeah 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 of course awesome hey guys welcome back this is ron jordan over at stars podcast coming out of rosinante studios in slippery rock pennsylvania today we have a guest coming onto the show a recent onto the nft scene i met him through a friend of ours awo and our nf daddies team and i'll tell you what um i actually won one of jtunes nfts which i'm super happy about i don't know if i manifested it or what i did but i saw it's a twitter spaces one and i'm just big into twitter spaces and and you guys know that because of this show and i won a twitter spaces hoodlum and welcome to the show jay tunes i want to jump into what are the hoodlums and how did you get introduced into nfts yeah man thank you for having me on here um so the hoodlums are a I guess you could consider them a PFP style uh, NFT project. Uh, They're all one of one hand drawn. Um, I got into them and created them because as a kid, I was always referred to as a hoodlum or a troublemaker or a hooligan or something, you know, it's just being from the, uh, the street kind of life, I guess you could consider it. Uh, I was always called 
you know, a hoodlum. So I, I decided to take that name and turn it into an NFT. And it's actually a funny story. Uh, NFT update was in the middle. I think it was on a Sunday. I was just doodling. Like I wasn't even doing it on purpose. I was just like, yeah, I wonder what a cartoon character would look like if it was like a little thug. So I drew this little thug cartoon and I was like, yo, no mouth and just big old white eyes, right? Just give them that kind of mischievous look. NFT update asked, what are y'all working on today? So I just threw that up there and I was like, uh, just, just playing around. And everybody responded to it positively. They were all like, oh man, this is awesome. Or this is great. And then he even went and retweeted it. And I was like, you know what? This could be something. So uh, I went ahead and I uh, made a few different mock-ups of it and then put them up and you know, I started pushing them and they actually sold faster than anything else that I've created under the Ink Society label. And um, they've been growing rapidly, uh, even with high gases, even with a bearish market. People are starting to gain traction with the hoodlums. They're picking them up, joining the servers. Um, I ventured into creating different styles of the hoodlums now. So we have some animated ones and some ones that refer back to like different cartoon characters. Dude, I saw the 3D one of the Mad Hatter. <laughs> yeah. Come on. What are yeah, you doing, sick. man? That's well, like that one. I saw that one and it immediately popped out, but it was in like an array of 12 of them that you sold that day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dude, the 3d hoodlums. So, so I started creating them. Right. And I started noticing, I, I was a big fan of like, I love cartoons, right? That's why uh, you can tell that by my name. Yep. Um, four and foremost, I love tattoos and, but most of all, I love cartoons. And, uh, when I came into this space, I saw pudgy penguins and I saw, board ape yacht club but i mean who hasn't right and um the pudgy penguins they started making 3d characters of their pudgy penguins just to like you know give away or airdrop or whatever they were doing with them and i was like yo how sick would it be if i made a 3d hoodlum so i got in contact with a friend of mine and we started making these 3d hoodlums and you know they're they're not very many and i'm just picking random styles that are already created in 2d just to kind of make them come to life right and you know, they're, they're actually, I think there's only one left in that collection now, but I plan to keep just dropping random ones in there just so that way they can have some fun with it and possibly do something with that in the future. Now with the hoodlums themselves in, in the ink society, as your, your uh, kind of overarching umbrella, what is the ink society and what, what are you trying to accomplish in the NFT space? So when I came in, six months ago, I think it's been, it was the late June, I believe, or mid June. Um, <laughs> I didn't know what an NFT was. I heard some news about GameStop getting into NFT space and how they're gonna be making these NFTs and people were considering them like cryptocurrency. So I started doing some research with my brother, came across the one guy who created Dogecoin. He created an NFT, I got into it. And then I was like, well, let me check this out. So I go to OpenSea. I start looking around. I start getting into Twitter again, which I, you know, never really use. I see animals everywhere. So I'm like, all right, cool. Got in. I was like, I'm just going to make a whole bunch of panda bears. So I made a whole bunch of panda bears. Never sold a single one. Mm -hmm. um, here come to find out at the same time I joined in, there was another uh, collection that rugged everybody. So, and they were using panda bears. So I kind of got a little stiffed on that one. And I was like, all right. So I kept trying other things. And eventually I was like, you know what? I'm going to bring some different style out here and I'm going to start doing stuff with tattoo, tattoo design. And my initial one that I was interviewed with by uh, NFT Insight, he was the first person to ever give me an interview. He interviewed me about my collection called Sugar's Crypto Soul. That was the original, the original name in the original collection. And um, I started bringing up pinup style girls that were littered in tattoos. And I'm talking like I would draw the tattoos themselves as individual images and then shrink them down and, and contort them to kind of like fit the body and kind of give this realistic, like if the arm was turned or not. And I kind of gave it a little bit of a sex appeal. Um, mm -hmm. Nothing too like, you know, X-rated, but just something yeah. that was kind of like on the side of pinups. And then I ended up giving their faces the Day of the Dead makeup on all of them. And then there were a few I would do what were called face reveals. And then you would get the one with the uh, face makeup and then one without the face makeup. And those took off. Uh, those took off very quickly. I started making actual like skulls that were like animated. And I was like, okay, so people do like the tattoo style here. So I went ahead and 
sat down and started thinking like, what can I turn this into? So I wanted to kind of build a brand. And so I called the brand Ink Society. Um, and I, my initial idea was I was going to try to get like tattoo artists and other street style artists, mural artists, people like real like street style art and bring them together. Eventually that was what, you know, the end goal was going to be. And then we could all be represented under this label and everything that we do underneath of it would be considered like sub collections or sub labels. Um, so I started doing that. I started making collections. I brought the, the Sugar Skulls over again, made a whole new collection and called it the Sugar Skull Society to fit the brand name. Um, and then I made the Ink Society, which was an NFT collection of individualized characters that had different tattoos. Some people requested, Awo was one of them, requested one that was made in his likeness with, uh, with his tattoos that he actually has on there. Um, people love that. That collection is actually currently sold out right now. And um, I plan to add more to that later on. But then I thought, well, let's take it a step further. You know, like this is the NFT space. We're still early here. So what else can I do that can be innovative? And one of the things I thought about was offering services. So I, I do offer some services under the Ink Society. Um, that's almost like going somewhere and paying to have something done, like a small business. One of it that I kind of haven't dabbled to or really publicized on much yet is uh, tattoo reincarnation. And what that is, is if you have a loved one, a grandfather or somebody, and you have a picture of like maybe a tattoo, you can kind of see it somewhat visible. I will redraw it and then turn it into an NFT for you and send it to you. So you can have that almost like a, a memorial to that person. And then right. if you yourself get a tattoo, you could always send me the design or take a picture of it. And then I can just redraw it up and send it to you as an NFT. And then you can have that forever. Um, if you have a PFP character and you want them to be all tatted up, send them over to me and I'll tattoo them just like I would do in a tattoo shop. <laughs> and um, I'll send them right back. And now you got this customized PFP. It's, I guess you could consider it a derivative. I did one for the, uh, the fame lady squad and um, it came out pretty sick looking, but you know, there's little services like that in there that I also offer all of which is described inside the discord server. And then you do have a discord server. Yes, I do. Uh, I have a discord server. It's ink society. Um, the link is in, I believe my bio, uh, on Twitter. I'll make sure I link that in the show notes too. Um, that's having Twitter, having the discord service or, or, um, server rather, and then just offering all of these different services, offering all of the, uh, you know, just the different collections that you're doing. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, man, the, the options inside of your head have to be endless. How do you choose? I, I, you know, what's funny. I don't choose. Uh, I do them all. <laughs> <laughs> I do them all. Perfect. I do them all because, you know, some are going to take, some are not going to take, but you never know until you try, you know, like one of the things that I see here is everybody talks about going slow, build, build the reputation up, build your community up. Don't overload your, your collections. And if you are going to have different things, make different collections. Uh, I listen to a lot of what NFT update says, you know, we we've talked before and he set me straight on a few different things, but I work very fast and it's not that, that I do it just to try to like make a whole bunch of money. It's just because I have a whole bunch of ideas that constantly are flying through my head mm -hmm. and I want to put them down and bring them out. So I, I slowed down a little bit. I tried to keep myself a little under control by getting into some other projects to keep my hands busy. But, you know, I, I love art at its core and I love innovation and I love trying to be a part of building a better future and and incorporating nfts into the real life into the real world and being accepted everywhere so i guess that over passion is just driving me to like just constantly be creating and then it's a, it is still a big investment in time doing all this with the nfts like why would you do it with nfts and not just do it in the traditional art world that's where i come from Right. I did. I did this a lot. So as a kid, um, I was homeless for a while. Uh, there were some issues at home and financially, we do not come from any means necessary of even middle class. We were below that. So in order for me to survive, there were, you know, two roads that I could choose from. One, I could take the traditional route that most of my family had done and go into drugs and, you know, hustling that way. Or I could do something different that, in my opinion, with my moral values, wouldn't hurt anybody. And that was electronic, computer electronics, and artwork. So people would actually pay me 
to draw them up tattoo designs. I got into tattooing. I did that for a while as well. Um, and then I, <laughs> I ended up going to a car meet called the Street Outlaws out in the Philadelphia area. They used to have car meet at the King of Prussia. And I got into that real heavy. And I used to tattoo the sides of vehicles. So I would take their front fenders and I would just do these crazy tattoo mural style artwork on it, clear coat it and then put it up there and they would put them on. I would tattoo, uh, I would do like tattoo style artwork on hoodies and shirts and sell them around the kids at school. I would sell them to friends. Um, I would do big art pieces and then I would sell them to like family members and friends as well. So I mean, art, art has always been there for me since I was a kid. And I actually had uh, a ride to the Art Institute of Philadelphia back when I was a kid, but I just passed up on it because I didn't think there was any money in art. Uh, you know, and that's coming from an art teacher in an AP honors art class. And I was just like, nah, there's no money in this. So I just skipped out on it. But yeah, hustle. I used to hustle a lot when it came to the traditional aspect of, of artwork. And I was pretty successful at that. So when the, when the opportunity for an NFT came around and I figured out what that was and started getting into it, I was like, yeah, this is something that I could definitely definitely do well and if I, if I put that same enthusiasm into it absolutely and having that early success even inside of your childhood and being able to have success with using your artwork had to be something that um that wasn't wasn't easily uh I, how do I want to say that like probably wasn't easy for you but really paved the way at the same time so what what was uh, maybe somebody that you looked up to back in the day or even look up to still now that kept you going in those times where it was like, man, how am I going to keep doing this and make a living out of it? One of my one of my idols is uh, Mr. Cartoon. He's a tattoo artist out of L.A. And um, I follow him a lot. I followed him for a long time. And he's a Hispanic man who has made a very big name for himself and he comes from very humble means and I feel like I could relate with him a lot with you know what he went through where he's at now and how he got there so that kind of pushed me to keep going in the in the sense of the artistic area um as far as like a personal a personal reference I looked up to and kind of motivated me to keep going was my grandfather um you know he was never one to take easy roads out he had very high morals um, he taught me a lot when it came to art. He was a painter as well. He served in the Navy. Uh, and then he worked at a power plant for a while. And, you know, he, he kind of inspired me as a, at a young age to just to pursue the things I want to do with, with as much intent to succeed as I could. And um, I took that to heart. And I've always kept that with me even after he passed away. And I instill that in myself and in my kids even to today when it comes to my artwork and just, just my way of life period. And, I'm just looking up Mr. Cartoon. I thought I knew who he was and I did. He's on that Modelo commercial now. Yeah, yeah, he is. Yeah, I just saw that um cuz I'm a big UFC fan, so I was and Modelo is a big sponsor of UFC. And I was like, "Man, I think I remember Mr. Cartoon." So, yeah, I I definitely remember who he is. And then yeah. it's it's interesting too. You brought up your grandfather being in the Navy working at a power plant. Um my I call him bonus son Holden. He's in the Navy. And then I myself work at power plants all the time with some of the <laughs> high voltage electrical equipment that, that I sell. So like it, it all comes full circle and I'm able to make that connection there. And it's, I also have a, have, you know, to bring my story into it, just a hair is like that old school mentality. You talk about your grandfather and his ability to just really push you to do the thing that you loved and he could see that in you and him having a perspective of being in the Navy and working at a power plant. I can only imagine just his, his joy that he must, must feel wherever he is um, in what you're doing now. You know what I mean? Like being able to have success in that thing that you really do love to keep yourself busy and not go down that other road. Like you talked about, cause I'm sure that other road was probably the, way easier to go down than going out on your own and doing this yeah it was i mean everybody has that option to do the easy road or the hard road but either way those decisions are going to come with consequences and personally i've always had like this mentality level and this moral code of mine that i don't want to hurt anybody i don't if i have to suffer then i suffer alone i don't want anybody to have to suffer too so by selling drugs or you know doing anything in a negative manner I'm affecting someone else's life negatively. And, and that's just a personal gain for myself. And that's not, 
you know, for me, that's not right. That's that goes against what I believe in. So, you know, I just chose the harder route because I'd rather take the harder route and have a clean conscience than take the dirty route and then live kind of with this guilt on my back. So, I mean, a lot of people, you know, get stuck in situations where they don't have a choice and I can understand that. I, I completely understand that. And I, <laughs> I'm related to some of that, but it's just, you know, there's choices. We all have choices. Yeah, we absolutely all have choices. And whenever you talk about, about that choice and what you're really dedicated to going down the easy road means you're dedicated to something a little bit different than having a clean conscience, you know, and and that introspective look at things is, is one that I like to dive into quite a bit here in the podcast is self-leadership is very important to me. And I think to everybody in that respect, because when it all comes down to it, you can watch all the motivational videos you want. You can read all the books and you can watch all the videos. But when, when you're just sitting there alone with an option to do this or that, I mean, you're not going (laughs) to, nobody's there helping. Yeah. (laughs) Nobody's there to help you at that point. You know, you got to make that decision based on your moral code. And that is something that you brought up too, is, you know, you have a code you live by. You know, it may not be some religious code, but there's a code inside of you that you're living by. Yes, sir. So, and that's the part of, that's the part to me that I'm noticing more and more as we talk, not just with you, just with other individuals in this space is um, our moral codes are very similar in terms of having a clean conscience and doing things for the right reason. And I think That's why the blockchain speaks to so many of us that are here right now is because it seeks out the truth. There's no way to lie about it. And it's a good way for us to connect directly to the people who we want to either a help or B inspire and, and have a connection to without anything in the middle where that truth sort of gets ambiguous. Yes, exactly. Yep. I agree hundred percent. So in terms of the blockchain and, and all of that, that aside, um, whenever you're creating your art, what are you working on? Um, are you working through an iPad? Are you working on a PC? How do you create? <laughs> yeah. So I, I <laughs> never used them. Yeah, dude, this, that was a wild ride, man. I, uh, I'm coming from paper and pencil, man. I got right. colored pencils, Prismacolor pencils, graphite pencils, and paper, you know, like traditional materials. And I needed to do something with whatever quote unquote digital art was at that time. So yeah. I went through six Android tablets, three touch, <laughs> three touch uh, laptops until finally I was convinced that the iPad was the way to go. So I was like, all right, let me give this stupid iPad a try. And I was like, damn it. It's great. So <laughs> yeah, I got into that. I use procreate a lot, man. That's all I live in. And um, then, you know, a few little side applications just to add a little pizzazz to it. But yeah, dude, I got a 12.9 inch uh, iPad Pro and two Apple pencils. And I might even have to get a second iPad because I draw so much that I kill either the pencil or the iPad before I'm done. And then I have to wait on it to charge, which kills production time for me. So then I'm like, ah, what am I going to do? So, yeah, dude, I mean, I love that thing, dude. I, I use it for everything. Yeah, Procreate has become the thing to use. And my God, I mean, they could sell it for hundreds of dollars if they wanted to. Don't say that. <laughs> I know, but I, I'm just Some saying like ideas. they could. I'm, I'm sure that idea is going around. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, Everybody's yeah, using it. it. So like, I don't know. It's it's really interesting to, to know that we're all sort of using the same tools um, because, you know, the iPad, the pencil, and then Procreate. Between those three things, it has completely changed the entire landscape of, of what we do there. Like you said, and that's why I, I was asking that question. And I'm glad that you brought up like the, the traditional art, that art supplies that you were using, you know, you had to make a transition. You, you had to completely learn a brand new, a brand new thing. Um, so that yeah. that's kudos to you on that. I mean, what was the learning curve? Like Did it, was it pretty intuitive? I mean, so I kept messing up a lot because, um, you know, it's such a smooth, glassy surface. So my hands kept touching things. I kept backing out of things, erasing things. And then these lines could, I could never get the lines to be straight or curved. So 
I ended up getting a, a screen protector for it that almost gave the same replica of paper. And um, that helped tremendously. And then I just sat for a week and then and I, to get over that learning curve, I just watched so many YouTube videos, like little tips and tricks, like things you could do to get the line straight. Um, but after a while, I kind of took to it pretty quickly because I'm also uh, inclined te technologically. So I have a degree in, um, in art with a concentration in computer information technology and computer uh, engineering. Mm -hmm. So understanding that basis of it was pretty simple to me. But to combine my art skills with my technological skills, that was just crazy for me because that's like yeah. the best of both worlds. That's why I'm so in love with this because it's like, if you spent your whole life obsessed with these two things and then they came together to make one thing, tell me you wouldn't be over obsessed. You know? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Crazy. Yeah. Whenever baseball, uh, cause I'm, I was obsessed with baseball growing up and then NFTs I'm, I'm now obsessed with. And then candy digital came onto the scene and I'm like, yeah, that's perfect. I'm definitely getting involved in that. Yeah, right. Because <laughs> it's baseball NFTs. Are you kidding me? So yeah, and and like you were saying, like you know, your background is in the in computer engineering, and now you know, being an artist, those two worlds combining, and then you know, you you just sort of taking what you already know, which is the paper side, and knowing that you know you're touching the screen and screwing things up and you're like man how do i solve that okay well let's get a screen protector let's see how that does you know you go through the screen protector okay that's good now you're like well now i'm drawing too much because now i need other other pencils and it's it's a constant evolution of this process and you know you coming onto this show and talking about that process is something that i i applaud you for because like you just talking about it and doing it is going to help the next generation come through and be able to do it better and faster. Um, and that's really the goal, isn't it? For us all to grow as, as a community and, um, and help each other out. Exactly. Yeah. Anything for, if I can help kids or future generations in any way, learn something better than I can do it, then I'll do it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'll take the trial and errors. So that way someone else can just get straight to the, uh, straight to the success part of it. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. So outside of NFTs and, and doing all of the illustrating and all of the things that you're doing, um, fitting in time for your family and, and other things, has that, has that been a struggle for you? Have you, have you been able to master that where I know I don't, I don't like to say work-life balance because there's really no balance. It's just you and what, what works for you. So like, have you been able to figure that part out yet for yourself? Um, yes, uh, it's, it's, this year has been a wild ride. Um, you know, there's been massive changes to my personal life here at home that I had to go over as well and try to get the situation of doing the art that I'm doing with the NFTs and, and the desire to want to be successful at it and kind of intertwine that with this new lifestyle that I've had to come to learn, um, over the past year and kind of make them work together or in synchronicity and it's been a challenge i'm not going to lie to you there's been some times where it's like i'm i'm too concentrated on the nfts i'm not paying attention over there or i'm paying attention over there and i'm not paying attention to the nfts or you know the structure and the balance between it has been an issue a little bit but over the past six months now that i've been in the space i've kind of been slowly transitioning into this um I guess you can call it like a schedule. Um, so yeah. like I do this, I do that. Then I stop, I take a break, almost like giving myself a reward system. And as funny as it sounds, the work is my reward because, because to be able to sit down and draw is not only the reward, but also a point of relaxation for me. So, you know, if I, if I do the laundry, do the dishes, get this done, help my wife do this, then I can sit down for an hour or two and draw. A you know, thousand it's, percent. Yep. It's, it's about structure, I guess. Yeah, I was actually just talking to one of our other guys on the team about this was because he's like, dude, how how do you how do you maintain everything that you're doing? And I said, it's because I have a schedule, honestly, yeah. like my just as you talked about your drawing is sort of your reward. Me doing this is my reward. Like podcasting is my reward. Editing videos is my reward. Like I got to. I got to pay the bills yet, bud, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> yeah, I gotta, true. I gotta make sure that I have the continued freedom that I do right now. Um, and the way to do that is I need to make sure that that's all taken care of too, 
So like you have to really schedule. And when you do fall out of the schedule, to me, like I would really beat myself up over it. Like, I can't believe like you're doing that. How could you forget this? And it's because I wasn't fully plugged in to one or the other. And that's the way you got to do it is you just have to structure it and have some purpose behind your time. Exactly. Yes, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad that you brought that up. I, I find that to be a, and honestly, like whenever you first start into stuff, that's whenever all the time gets taken up and like wasted time because you're trying to learn so much. So you don't know, you don't know which path to go down. So you go down them all. And you're like, man, I, I just wasted a lot of time and I didn't really get anything from it. And I wasted time that I could be spending over here. So like, I think anytime that we go after something new and don't, and, and sort of go after it ourselves, it's much more difficult. And we lend ourselves to a situation that, you know, is, is out of balance. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. That, that, um, that learning curve, man, I tell you, well, cause like I said, when I came in here, I did the pandas, right? So I didn't know what a generative project was, man. I'm yeah. telling you, I felt like a dummy because I'm sitting there and I'm like, all right, so a gen project is basically just hand drawing the same image over and over again with different costume pieces mm-hmm. and different colors. So I did that for the Panda Tunes and I made about a hundred, <laughs> sold two and deleted all of them. And that was like over a hundred hours worth of work time that I just basically trashed. Because it was just, you know, it it was a learning experience because that's not what a generative project is. That's not what everybody wants. You know, there's a whole bunch of, there's a lot to a gen project than I even initially thought there was. So in the course of learning it and doing it, I give mad props to the artists who are sitting on these gen projects because that is some meticulous work that needs to be done and definite repeats over and over again. So Anybody looking to do gen projects, just do research on that first before you go jumping into it. Well, that's part of it. Being a part of the community before you actually launch your NFT project, I think is something that people overlook. They see yes, they see the outcome and they're like, I can do that. I can draw. I can illustrate. I can animate. And then they launch it and it's like, you're not plugged into anybody or anything inside of the space. So how do you plan on a selling any of it or, or be like connecting to the group like if you don't even know what wag me means like w- what do you do uh, yeah <laughs> like what does gm mean i don't know you know like if you're not a part of it it's hard for you to connect uh with this community and i think that's where a lot of celebrities are going the the wrong way but i don't want to go down that that path um, <laughs> yeah. i don't want to go there if you're talking to new artists that are on the up and coming scene or some former artists, what, what are you talking to your friends about with NFTs? And like, are you, are you assisting these up and coming artists to, to get into NFTs? Yes, hundred percent. So I dedicate a lot of my time to answering everybody. Um, I, I'll answer some with maybe an emoji here and there because there's just so many I'm trying to get through real quick, but if somebody has a question, I will stop. I will assist them as best I can. I will give them every piece of knowledge and any resource that I have. If I even got to help, you know, even financially, anything that I got to do to help this person get in the right direction so they can avoid the mistakes that I made initially and just get straight to the, to the good stuff, then I'm going to help them as best I can. Um, obviously, they themselves will have some kind of a learning curve. There will be time with it. But yes, there's a, there's a few artists I'm actually currently working with and I even give my personal information to just so that way I can talk to them on the phone mm-hmm. and walk them through steps and do anything that I can possibly do. Um, I, I really do believe in the, uh, in the teamwork aspect of things and the helping someone else succeed um, is just the same as you succeeding to, to me anyway. To me too. Yeah, that's the way I feel about it as well. Because like I, I, it's something that I have, uh, I've lived by for a very long time is when I can help other people make money, I never have to worry about money. Exactly. You just don't. If you eat, they eat. Yeah, because A, you, you like feel very fulfilled in what you're doing. And, and B, like just being able to help others is like, you don't even need payment for it. It just makes nope. you feel good. Yes, exactly. I, I agree. 100%. That's all you need. <laughs> it really is. 
Yeah. If you think about like just fulfillment and what it gives you in your life, like we're all trying to go after that self-fulfillment. We're trying to reach that, that highest peak of, of self-actualization and that Maslow's hierarchy, if you're into that type of stuff. And like, once we can get to the baseline, like you said, you were homeless at one point, like, you know, perspective. So like everything above homeless is sweet. Yeah. Right. I never <laughs> complain, dude. I never complain. <laughs> It's, it's those of us who come from nothing that really respect it, what we do have and know that if it all goes to shit, we'll still be okay. Yeah. I mean, you, you, when, you, when you hit rock bottom, the only place to go is back up again. So mm -hmm. you can't really go further than that. And, you know, living life, being more appreciative for the things that you have instead of the things that you want is another way to look at it. True. That's another way that I live. And I, I'm not a materialistic person. I've never been a materialistic person. So for me, my materialistic quote unquote would be if somebody else is happy. If I can make someone else smile or laugh or tell them a joke, I will because that right there is worth more than money to me. You know, <laughs> it's just that's my personality. I just I'm not a people pleaser, but I am a people make happier. You know what I mean? Uh huh. No, I I know exactly who who you're talking about. Yeah, definitely. Um. So. I appreciate you coming on the show. Where can everybody find you at? And uh, just drop your socials and maybe where they can find more about the Ink Society. Yes. So uh, right now, currently, you can find any information on my Twitter page. Um, my Discord is chock full of all kinds of official links and everything there for all of the collections. My link tree is also within my Twitter. Um, and there is a website currently under development for uh, the Ink Society as a whole, which will break down the sub collections as well. Awesome. And, and your Twitter handle is JTunes, correct? Yes, sir. All right. You guys heard it. JTunes, Twitter. Check him out. All of the info for his Discord, as well as the collections, those are also in the Twitter bio, in the link tree, and get into the Discord. I'm in that Discord. Um, I'm always looking at the announcements. He's always has something going on, like literally <laughs> always something new dropping. Um, he's got so many different collections and so many cool pieces of art. Um, I have the one of one Twitter spaces one. So booyah. Ching, yeah, you ching. do. <laughs> and uh, so I appreciate that. I won that on a giveaway and he's constantly doing giveaways and just, you know, check him out. He's doing good things out there, furthering along the, uh, the NFT space. And uh, thank you for coming on the show. J tunes. Appreciate you, brother. No problem. And thank you. All right, guys. As always, enjoy the journey. Take care. Thank you so much for sticking here until the very, very end. If you wouldn't mind just leaving a comment or subscribing or liking the podcast or wherever you downloaded this, maybe it was from YouTube, um, I would love for that and take an extra couple seconds to give us some more love. Even though you have listened here to the very, very end, we appreciate that so much. Could you also go over to thestarspodcast.com if you found any of this uh, really interesting and you wanted to dive in a little bit further or go to our Discord, which is Rosinante Studios NFT. Enjoy the journey.